Tonight, a look at how our good intentions may be more hurtful than helpful. Several organizations in West Michigan have changed the way they do things to avoid letting charity become toxic. 24 Hour News 8's Teresa Weekly went to find out what toxic charity is and how we can avoid it. The definition of toxic charity is to do for others what they are able to do for themselves. It's the idea that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but he still may starve later unless you teach him to fish. Bruce Pruitt has a nickname. What's your nickname? Do it Pruitt. Because anything need to be done, I can do it. Bruce left home as a teenager to escape an abusive, alcoholic father. I've always been a person that I had people that give me a hand, not a hand out, you know. He's getting that hand up at Mel Trotter Ministries in Grand Rapids. Going this way? Unlike more traditional shelters, guests here have more choices and more responsibility. What happens at that point is we start turning people that are living into poverty and just receiving, we turn them into consumers. Consumers who pay for their own meals, $2 each. If they can't pay cash, they can use their food stamps or do work at the shelter to earn vouchers. It sounds so strange, but guests will come up and say thank you. Uh, they didn't say thank you when it was free. We all feel compelled to do something when we see someone asking for help. Would this help, sir? Sure. There you go. Good day. You too. But whether it's food or cash, we may wonder if this kind of giving is helpful. The first time we give something, there's appreci appreciation on the part of the receiver. The second time, there's expectation. The third time, there's some entitlement. And the fourth time, there's dependency. Giving them a few dollars isn't helping them end their poverty. Um, it's not going to help them change their situation. And yeah. where was your room? I lived right there in 209. Megan grew up in West Michigan in a middle-class yes. family. She never thought she'd end up in a homeless shelter, but using alcohol to deal with depression and anxiety caught up to her. I had like three days to figure out where I was going. I was calling all over, just not sure where to go. Megan was embarrassed to ask for help. The opportunities at Mel Trotter to be a part of her own recovery made her feel better about accepting it. And I was doing that 20 or 30 hours a week and it gave me a sense of purpose. It gave me that dignity back that I just, I didn't realize how low I felt about myself and how little I thought of myself until I started climbing back out of that pit. It's been almost a year since Began first walked through the doors here. Now she has a job where she was recently promoted and lives in her own studio apartment. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny, but I love it. I love it. I, yeah, you can go in there, shut the door. I mean, on my days off, I just sit in the corner by the window and read, and it's just quiet. Mel Trotter developed a toxic charity team to make sure the tactics are truly helpful. Instead of a Christmas toy giveaway, they now have a Christmas Christmas store. Instead of giving away toiletries and clothes, guests use earned vouchers to pay for it. Bruce is working on building his own ministry. But because of Mel Trotter, sowing into my life, that causes Bruce to sow into the lives of the people that he come in contact with. It's a wonderful thing. He plans to do that the same way it was done for him by giving a hand up. There are quite a few agencies in West Michigan modeling this approach. They stress that there is a difference between a crisis and chronic poverty. They will always help someone in a crisis. But when you keep giving that same thing, even after the crisis is over, that's when the charity becomes toxic. In the studio, Teresa Weekly, 24 Hour News 8.